Gibson win of number 11 Wisconsin. The Badgers a perfect 6 and 0 in the Big Ten, and Purdue a surprise challenger. They're 5 and 1. Welcome to Sold Out Mackey Arena, everyone. Great to have you along. Dave O'Brien, my partner, Doris Burke. Two good teams going head to head today, Doris, and teams in every sense. Lots of balance, no real stars, but real good balance both ways. Well, I think that kind of balance prohibits a team on the defensive end from keying on any one guy. Wisconsin opened the Big Ten 5 0. Oh, five different guys scored 20 or more points. Purdue has had eight different leading scores. It's a real challenge for teams to guard these two clubs. Let's get you to Star Watch now, and Robbie Hummel and and Brian Butch in the spotlight. Yeah, Brian Butch is a guy who struggled with his shooting, but they need his defense, his rebounding, and his experience. And Hummel, six foot eight, can handle, pass, and score. He's a real mismatch on the offensive end. Here are the Volvo starting lineups for the day for Wisconsin. Tremont Hughes runs the offense with defensive stopper Michael Flowers in the backcourt. Marcus Landry was big against Michigan this week. Joe Kravenhoff and Brian Butch are the bangers. And for Matt Painter's Purdue Boilermakers, Chris Kramer is a ball hawker at a guard spot, along with Keaton Grant and Etuan Moore. Nemanja Chalashan is 6'9". He's going to try and slow down Wisconsin's big people. Hummel is a 6'8", three-point threat, and Doris, that makes him a potential matchup problem for Wisconsin. Well, I think what Purdue would like to do is get Wisconsin moving on the defensive end, get the ball into Hummel's hands, and allow him, once the defense is moving, to use the dribble drive and his ability to pass the ball to exploit Wisconsin's bigs. Purdue coming in overall at 14 and 5. Wins over Michigan, Ohio State, Iowa, Illinois, and Penn State. The only loss to Michigan State under Matt Painter in his third year looking for the upset. Although I think a lot of people inside the conference wouldn't be absolutely shocked if this good young Boilermaker team pulls it off today. Wisconsin comes in Riding high, however, at 6-0 in the Big Ten, 6-0 in the conference for the second year in a row for Bo Ryan. Wisconsin in the red, Purdue in the home whites. We are set to go. A great atmosphere here at Mackey Arena today, and the Badgers win the opening tip. Purdue, of course, man-to-man, -man, nothing else under Matt Painter. Hughes getting up quickly to Kravenhoff. Very unselfish ball player and very, very rugged. Landry with the spin in the paint. That's a name they have heard inside this building because his brother was such a star here. Tipped up and in for the first bucket of the day. Landry becoming more comfortable playing that small forward is more likely to go off the dribble drive and set teammates or score himself. Purdue has really dominated the series here in West Lafayette. 64 to 16 against Wisconsin all time here in this town as that one is tipped away by Michael Flowers who of course has had probably the most famous steal of the college basketball season and that thrilling win over Texas. And it follows it up with a great defensive play. We'll show you that sequence probably as good a sequence as we'll see in college basketball this year. Ten to shoot Kramer down the lane. Forks it up that one fall. Chalashan with the rebound. Tried to go right back up and went right into the body of Butch and lost it. That's classic Wisconsin defense. Yeah, they want to go chest to chest with you on the defensive end. Kalashan's got to be smarter than that. And Bo Ryan's team's noted for that, not just at Wisconsin, but when he was a great coach in Division Three in winning national championships as well. Battle up well outside. Here's Flowers, who can also hit that three-point shot, trying to wriggle in, and he lost it. Purdue will be very physical on the defensive end. Boilermakers on the attack. On a nice dish inside, but Kramer couldn't finish it as he drove to the basket, but got an excellent look. Something we saw from Chalashan last week. Remember, he took the big defender away from the, the box and was effective with his shooting. We'll see if he does that today. Flowers was at 41% outside that three-point arc. Here's Hughes, a terrific penetrator. And Purdue forcing Wisconsin to be ultra patient here. Butch with the leader, tried the window, and it won't go. There's Hummel with the rebound. It takes down about six per game, averaging 11 points. The team that shares the ball very, very well. Moore will fire that one off the glass for two. Nice job to shoot the mid-range. Don't go into the big bodies inside. Make sure you pull up before you get to that size. The officials today, Ted Hillary, Tom O'Neill, and Steve Stiles. Well, that was expected to be a very gritty and physical battle this afternoon. 
Tied at two. Hughes gives up that dribble. Here's Landry again. And those old fashioned goggles, which again to his right, that could be a lot of trouble today inside for Purdue. Yeah, and this is not a traditional offense where you see a, a ton of hard pull stops. It's a continuity from Wisconsin, but each guy will get an opportunity on the box. And, and, and listen, Bush should take advantage of that. Jalashan around and out. A big fellow from Bosnia who can go outside that arc and drain it. Not this time. Wisconsin coming in, number 11 in the country. On the drive, it's Landry, the bump, and that's going to be an offensive foul on Marcus. Landry, back to Butch a moment ago on his move to the basket. And clearly, the more pressure Purdue can apply on the outside, the better, because you want to prohibit this kind of entry pass. You do not want to expose your weakness, which is a size disadvantage inside. So look for them to apply tons of pressure on the ball and deny the first pass to try to disrupt Wisconsin. It's the big senior at 6'11 out of Appleton, Wisconsin. Now the turnover here, as you look at Bo Ryan in his seventh season at Wisconsin, last two years now, college basketball, only Memphis, Kansas, Florida, and North Carolina have a higher winning percentage than Bo Ryan does in Madison, 85%. I'm not sure he gets enough credit on the national stage. He lost Orlando Tucker, a high draft pick, and Cameron Taylor, Orlando Tucker, and Cameron Taylor, and look at him. You know, he's the top of the Big Ten standings. 16 and 2. This is the start of a grueling series, three consecutive games that are really going to test Wisconsin inside the conference. Johnson will knock that one down. Jawan Johnson, rangy at 6'10, shooting up and over the defense. Yeah, he may not develop as fast as the other guys, but that guy's got star potential. Coming in, averaging about six points and four rebounds. And the hold will go on Keith Grant. He picks up the foul. His first. This one tied up at four. And out of the final seconds today, it may still be tied between Bo Ryan and Matt Vayner. If you're Wisconsin, the swing offense, basically a continuity offense. And one of their main principles is get post touches. So as they come up the floor, they'll look for Brian Butch. If nothing, then the ball goes from Trayvon Hughes to Carl Landry. There's an exchange out here, but eventually you'll see Butch clear. You'll get a pick and roll on the right-hand side of the floor, a dive through the lane by Trayvon Hughes. Pick and roll, they'll look for some options, either scoring from Flowers, maybe a dump down to Trayvon Hughes, perhaps a kick out to Brian Butch, who can make that shot. And for Bo Ryan using that to a perfect start inside the conference, their only road loss of the season, as anybody, was against Duke way back in November. Trying to knock off Purdue in a very, very tough arena. Trayvon Hughes turned it over. Here's Crump pushing his great dish there to Martin and swept away by Landry on a terrific block. Well, you just made a great point. They've had two losses, Duke on the road and then also to Marquette at home, which snapped a 29-game win streak. The key for both teams, Duke and Marquette, they were able to pressure Bo Ryan's team out front, get them out of their rhythm on the offensive end. So Purdue would like nothing more than to mirror what Duke and Marquette were able to do. Wisconsin with a lot of games in the 60s and low 70s and I think people presume well that's where they want it. Bo Ryan says not necessarily so. Kramer can't find the range on the three. The rebound is tipped to Wisconsin. Ryan Thomas before the game that's where it has fallen but we're just a team looking for the best shot and if that means we shoot enough and score enough to score 90 it's fine with us. Purdue forcing the turnover. Crump gets it right back to lay it up and in on a great feed from Robbie Hummel. So exactly what I was just talking about. Pressure out front. You force them to pick up the dribble. Poor decision results in a turnover. Boilermakers with their first lead in front of this boisterous house. Johnson went for the theft, couldn't get it. Purdue has already gone eight deep, by the way, just five minutes into this thing. With the dribble down, Stinson has it lost. Here comes Kramer, one of the best defenders in the conference. A wise choice to pull back that. And it's off to Crump on the wing. And now the Boilermakers will set things up. They're looking for their 15th win of the season. And going for their fifth in a row. And you consider a surprise. The Boilermakers have been this good inside the conference. The stop by Steensmith. Shot clock is down to seven. Jumping in. Kramer and the foul. He'll go to the line. 
some of that athleticism of the team captain, Chris Kramer, looking for the three-point play. It's all about heart and toughness. Former high school quarterback, not afraid on the offensive end. If he just makes good, solid decisions with the basketball, goes right at the chest of Steamsma. And a guy who's taken a hit or two in his career. Steamsma picking up his first. The, the toughness of Kramer hitting the deck awfully hard, too. And a former outstanding high school football star as well. Third in the Big Ten with the ball hawking we talked about. And back onto the floor now, John Lure, the 6'10 freshman out of Long Lake, Minnesota, at 25 against Michigan earlier this season. A real weapon for Bo Ryan, who loves to use his bench. Yeah, well, he scored those against a 1 3 1 zone in Michigan. They were not playing great defense at the time, but that's a 6 10 body with a guard mindset and guard skills. He can stick it. Purdue on a 7 zip run. And Wisconsin has quickly fallen behind by five in the early minutes. Hughes with the hard drive. He gets bottled up on a double team right on that baseline and throws it away. Another stop. And the five turnovers for Wisconsin. Well, I'll tell you this. Wisconsin's got to do a better job with their decision making. Don't pick up your dribble unless you know where your pass is going. Bo Ryan talked to practice about that yesterday. A whistle before the pass settled into the hands of Scott Martin. That'll go against the Boilermaker. On surprised Indiana. With two suspended players, Jerome Dyson and Doug Wiggins, both out, and the Huskies with a huge win today. So you what, Jim Calhoun's team facing adversity. Well, I'll talk about adversity. How about the look on Matt Painter's face as the foul goes against Purdue here? A personal foul on Green. He picks up his second quick one. I'll tell you why he's working the officials so hard right now. It's early in the basketball game, and we've seen two perimeter fouls. Now, what you want to do is be as physical as you can if you're Purdue. There's a chest bump and, and enough contact that it's advantage-disadvantage. But he's trying to send a message. My guys are going to be in their grill, and they're going to be physical. And but, I can't have those fouls. Yeah, awfully ticky-tack, if you ask me. Bohannon outside. Good shooter, good passer. We're seeing a lot of dribbling by the Badgers, and that's not necessarily what Ryan has in mind today. Shot clock down to 11. Flowers a bump there. And they're going to call that an offensive foul. That goes against Wisconsin. Well, it seems like it's been a while since Wisconsin has had a basket, and that's all because Purdue is playing tough-minded, physical, aggressive perimeter defense. We saw Bo Ryan. He could read the lips as he questioned Tom O'Neill. What did he do, he said. What did he do? The shot by Martin. Got an excellent look. Here comes Flowers, certainly one of the best athletes on the court here today. Trying to feed it inside to the big fella Steamsman. Blocked away by Jawan Johnson. And a whistle there with 12.46 to go in the half. Do you see why I think this kid can be a superstar? First of all, he's got incredible feet. He tries to deny. He gets beat. His teammate comes over. Keaton Grand, sensational job allowing him enough time to recover. And then twice on the pipe. 15 to shoot it for Wisconsin. Lore so far unable to get on track offensively. Lore on the dribble. Here's Flowers. Just beat that shot clock. And Wisconsin has been held off the scoreboard for four minutes and 45 seconds. As both of them, both head coaches, have questioned the officials. Both of them staying in the box, however, at least initially. Wisconsin now two for eight from the field with six turnovers here in the first half. But if, if you can do this, if you can pressure the basketball and take away the first pass from Wisconsin and make them uncomfortable and not allow them that motion and continuity, then you make it hard for them to score. Ball off the screen by Johnson. Here's Mark left open. A line drive shot. He's only hitting about 28% from three. I think he's a better shooter than that percentage. You look at that form, a guy who can make shots. Both he and Martin 
Bradford, almost 6'8 and versatile. Landry attacking that goal, and he draws the foul. Boy, the energy is high inside this building, to put it mildly. And the coaches are certainly feeling it, too. Third-year head man Matt Painter, desperate for an upset win today at home. Defensive pressure and the stops by the Boilermakers, they have been the story. Yeah, this is a tough-minded, grind you, bulldog mentality by Purdue, and they want to pressure the basketball. And if you pick up your dribble and have to make a tough, long pass with a lot of air underneath it, forget about it. Results in a two-on-one handled beautifully. Again, Trayvon Hughes picks up his dribble. Look at the activity off the basketball. Everybody cheats up a pass. Then you try to go inside, take advantage of your size, but Jawan Johnson, 6 from 10, 210 pounds, says, no, sir. Uh, Ted Hillary chatting there with Matt Painter, who settled out a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> Since last we saw him, Landry will go to the line. He's at 73 percent, but look at that, 526 without a field goal for Wisconsin. Andrew's older brother Carl is now the Houston Rockets was a big star here at Purdue his last season named all Big Ten as a senior ending his career with over 1100 points and Matt Painter said boy when you watch his brother you have similar mannerisms similar release on the shot similar movements on the court no surprise I guess it's a big big shot against Michigan this week in their victory as that fall away won't go by Martin a very good shooting touch Left-hander can't get it to go from short range. Well, the foul shot by Landry moments ago busted up the 10-0 run, but they're still looking for a field goal to first about six minutes, and they get it with the foul as well. Trevon Hughes knocking it down. Well, that action is something that you'll see a lot from Wisconsin. It's a little back screen action. It gets a guard down on the box. Trayvon Hughes, a tough shot as the Chalishan tries to challenge. That's a big trying to recover out on the guard. It's one on Chalishan. Hughes, a 62% foul shooter. And Chalishan yanks down the rebound. Wisconsin finally does hit one from the floor. And a 12-7 lead for the Boilermakers. You have to argue that even though Matt Painter was upset, as Hughes lost that one out of bounds off his fingertips. Then it was upset by a call, and, and certainly a Bo Ryan has been several times here in the first half. It's the pace, it's the style of game that Purdue wants. Yeah, and they're doing, they're following their game plan to a T. Disrupt and keep your action as far away from that post as you possibly can. And the bounce on high for Hummel. Each one more will lock it up. Chalishan with the rebound to haul it in and give the Boilermakers another crack at it. Here's Grant who can hit the three. Hummel outside. Chalishan flashing there. He really wants it. Trying to go toe to toe with Bush. He's commanding the ball. He's frustrated. He's working hard. He should get him the basketball. And Butch hauling in that rebound. The number four rebounder in the Big Ten. There's three so far here in the first half. The feed for Landry off the window for two. Yeah, this is a guy who's got inside-out skills. He's becoming more comfortable on the face-up game. But one of Landry's strengths is you guard him small, he's going to put you on the box, and he's got great one-on-one -on -one skills down there. Mini run now for the Badgers. We're starting to get it offensively together. Although they certainly have taken their time here in the first half. They've closed within three. Chalishan with that left hand. Oh, excellent touch. Tipped up by Grant at no go. Chalishan again off the dribble. That spun right out of his hands. The crowd howling for a foul, and it will not come. Now, you know, and Bo Ryan told Brian Butch yesterday at practice, go chest to chest. Make him shoot over you. But that kind of extension, when he raises his hands, forget about it. Flowers in tight for two. Nice move. Here. Yeah, so they are. They're starting to settle down on the offensive end. They're using the dribble drive now to get things they want. It's a 7-0 run for Wisconsin. Back and forth we go here. Grant won't wait. A rainbow three off target. He's shooting it much better this year, but that's a poor shot. I mean, you can get a better shot than that after working the clock a little bit. Yeah, he's 47% outside the arc. And timeout here. It'll be a timeout, Wisconsin. And Purdue just one out of six from three-point land. They're starting to cool off, and here comes Wisconsin. By Bud Lights.
Louisville won a four Big East teams out at a four and two conference mark. They've won nine of 11. As they got healthy, boy, their play really improved. Look at Butch, the big guy, put it to the floor, but he's also traveling with it once he got tied up. The polar bear. Oh, Steve Lavin and Brent Musburger, our Big Ten colleagues, have nicknamed him. Great comparison of those two guys on the air the other night in that Wisconsin game. I actually took them ice fishing. Couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe Aaron Andrews actually went out there in the high heels and the whole nine yards. They made her hold the fish. That's what I couldn't believe. She actually picked up a fish. She's a trooper. It definitely doesn't belong in a rink anywhere. <laughs> Shalishan well outside on the high post now for Purdue and the whistle with 10 16 to go in the half. And talking about the difficult stretch of games really beginning today for Wisconsin. Then it's number eight Indiana. You know they're going to be ticked off after what happened today and then at Minnesota. And Bull Ryan said, you know, I never preach this is for the Big Ten title. So I've never done that with any of my teams. Like this means make or break, but it probably does. Well, it, I think it's smart because you've got 18 to 22 year olds. Just keep it as simple as possible. Focus on the task at hand. Oh, Moore drains the three from the wing. Etwan Moore, the freshman out of East Chicago, Indiana. What's the difference between that shot and Grant's? Three or four passes had been made, and thus the shot becomes a little bit easier. Defense a little bit more spaced. Off Purdue, that rolls out with 9.53 to go in the half. When we talk about make or break, talking about make or break meaning for the Big Ten title, just could come down to what happens in these three games and how they come out after it. Yeah, it's always a, I don't need to say it. They got enough people in here. Well, a tough move in close by Kravenhoff has great hands. Probably the most underrated player in the Big Ten today. Well, that does a lot of hustle things. A tough-minded guy with score, pass it, defend. Well, Purdue just tosses it away. Now the momentum is switched over to Wisconsin in the last two or three minutes. And Joe Kravenhoff not underrated by the coaches by any measure. They all know how good, how valuable he is for Bill Ryan. Looking inside, Steamsman feeds back outside for Bohannon, and that won't fall for him. Tap by Steamsman trying to keep it alive, and indeed it's going to be okay. He's going to bring it across. Yeah, tip by Purdue. The follow away by Hughes off the front of the iron. Let's see if they can settle down and get the defense moving. That was their game plan. Grant doesn't wait around. Not there for him and a rebound by Greg Steamsman. Wisconsin can take the lead on this possession with a three. They're 0 for 2 from that distance so far. And both coaches of the opinion that whichever team shoots it a lot better from the perimeter, from distance, is probably going to come out in front today. Yeah, they felt like they were going to have to make shots and tough shots with a defender in your chest. Seven on the shot clock. Bohannon off to Landry. Rebounded by Steamsman. Right back up. A sneaky rebound, but he can't cash in. Moore with the feed. Chalishan going body to body to Steamsman. And high up Landry with the block. He's had a couple in the first half. Yeah, and I'm not sure why Chalishan is not doing what he did last week against Illinois. And that is take his basketball away from the paint. He's trying to go chest to chest to score over bigger guys. He's got the ability to shoot the perimeter jump shot. Hughes, very exciting player, very strong finisher if he goes in. Instead, the feed winds up into Steamsman. The Hisman shot will roll away. But he's still on top by two. Two really tough minded defensive teams. Wisconsin number one in the Big Ten and field goal percentage defense top ten in the country. Both teams are under 40% for the game. Chalishan is in and out with his jump shot. That's where his advantage is though. I, I don't that's what I was looking for him to do. That's not a mistake. That's a good shot for him. Landry will humble out on him. Steamsman. Hughes with a little fall away on the baseline. And a whistle and a foul. We'll be going the other way with 7.09 to go in the first half. And coming up, Brian's journey. Brian Butch was a high school star when he came to Wisconsin. State. Scott, thank you very much. Purdue on top by two with seven minutes remaining here in the first half.
at Mackey Arena. Neither side lighting it up from outside. We do, in fact, without a field goal over the last three minutes. And Wisconsin went about six minutes in between field goals earlier. We thought this would be a grind on the defensive end. It has proven to be just that. Moore all the way in. Tough shot. Brian Hoff to haul in the rebound for the Badgers. Well, Brian Butch has done his job. He has protected that rim. Terrific. Terrific post defense in there, even when guys have gotten by on the drive. Who well, wins that rebounding battle will be huge in this one. Hughes with a left hand, and that one rolls in. Trayvon Hughes. Just about as fast on the dribble as he is running without it. A little bit shaken up here. And grimacing after he made that bucket. Remember now, he hurt his ankle at Texas the night before they were supposed to play that. And who knows if that's what that is. We'll keep an eye on that. That one is kicked on the bounce pass by Moore. Wisconsin over the last five minutes has gone on an 11 to 3 run. So, but a game of swings. 6:32 on the clock here in the first half as Martin will check it in. He gives it back to Johnson. Needs one more. The many talented freshmen on this side for Purdue, and he flips it up and in. So we've seen him drain a three and now go off the dribble, and his pace has been better now. He's not rushing. He uses a little hesitation to get by. The do by two. The back shot will float on in, and Trevon Hughes apparently feeling just fine. If it was that ankle that he tweaked again, he now has six points. Looking very fluid in the offense. Now he could give you some scoring from the one guard spot. See, I think Trayvon Hughes can be a next level guy for this team. Johnson too strong, and that's Martin over the back. Trying to keep that rebound alive. We talked about Brian Butch and his long journey to good health. He's a high school McDonald's All-American. He redshirted in his freshman year. That's very unusual. Lots of injuries in his first three seasons. And of course, that right elbow dislocated. The end of last year, but now senior success, 13 points and eight rebounds for the Polar Bear. And when they lost Hughes about 13 hours before they tipped off in Austin, Texas, who came up huge? 21 points, 11 rebounds, Brian Butch. Baseline pass, Laura can't handle it. And a whistle. And the, there was a timeout call. There was a timeout and it was granted and the crowd doesn't like that because the ball had spit free. Timeout Wisconsin. Now does he have possession when he calls timeout? I thought it was a loose basketball. Mm -hmm. So even if he's calling timeout. Wow. Lord on his back we're going to make a pass. That ball was loose. So questionable whether that timeout should have been granted. We're tied up 17 apiece. You know what? I think you saw from Purdue early. There is great energy in this building, folks. And on the defensive end, that helped them. They were playing hard. They were out in passing lanes. They were pressuring the basketball. But the paint grew on the offensive end. I think there's some anxiousness. We saw a lot of quick shots by Purdue in this first half. Bo Ryan's team sort of clamped down on the defensive end. That's how they got back in it. But Purdue helped that cause by quick shooting the basketball. Hughes will set it up now for the Badgers. Nearly gave it up. The kick outside for Lurie has great range, but that's off the back of that iron. Now let's see the pace at which Purdue plays it. They're two for ten from three, which I think is too many threes for them to start the half. The feed for Johnson leans in. Boy, he is a deadly weapon running the floor. He is so long. Hard to contest that shot when that young man's coming at you. Think about Juwan Johnson when his body and frame fills out. He will be a terror. Yeah, all 6'10 of it. Bohanna with Kramer guarding him. Runs him right into a screen. Under five minutes to go here in the first half. A whistle on that baseline and a foul. And it will be one and one time. So more with the personal. Wisconsin only five team fouls, and that's an important part of what they do. As hard as they play and as fundamentally sound as they are for Bo Ryan on the defensive end, they do not put their opponent at the free throw line very often. A low scoring first half, as we thoroughly expected. 
Atlanta at 79 to south the line. Has another one coming. We talked about what this graphic means and inside foul dimension, we're calling it. <laughs> I like that. Well, plus 121 in terms of the number of times their opponent fouls them. And so the disparity in free throw attempts and free throws made. Tied up for the fifth time here in the first half. Johnson handing off for Robbie Hunter. Also their best passer. They're shoved there. They're going to get more with the personal. It'll be his first. Six ten being asked to come away from the rim. Now remember, this was a six two player, a sophomore in high school, was a guard, and in a very short period of time, grew eight inches. Four thirty one to go here in the first half. Purdue last year won twenty two games, enjoyed the biggest turnaround in wins in the history of the Boilermaker program, up from nine the previous year. Went to the NCAA tournament. They knocked off Arizona. Then fell in a hard-fought battle to Florida. A lot of the Gators played down the team, so that was the toughest game they played the entire tournament. I'll tell you this. He's, he's right on pace. In fact, Matt Payne is probably ahead of schedule in getting this program back to its glory days in the Big Ten. Four. Feeding Hummel. Nicely done. To the sweet touch by Ronnie Hummel, and only a freshman. I love that kid's game. I love it. He's just got great IQ, good field, passes it, scores it. Both coaches talk about that. High basketball IQs for both sides. And another turnover by Wisconsin. That was a problem early. Well, Robbie Hummel, six foot eight, but really skilled, folks, makes a solid cut. Dives right to the rim. That soft touch gets a shoulder square. Looks solid on the offensive end. Well, Purdue and the paint crew believing that this is the day number 11 Wisconsin goes down for the first time in Big Ten play. They are perfect 6 and 0. And the Boilermakers are 5 and 1 coming into this key clash in the Big Ten. Great to have you with us. Inside sold out Mackey Arena. Outside is Hummel. And a beautiful short range jump shot, but he can also go up beyond that three point arc as well. Motion offense by Purdue. Boy, at the foul line. The iron. Looked like he had enough touch that would hang in there. Johnson so fast off his feet. Hughes in command of the offense for Bo Ryan. Lower with the spin, trying to dump it down low. Top pass, and there's Brooks to lay it in. Boy, he's a lot to handle in his size and his ability close to the rack. Every time they've, they've did, done a good job with their offense, they've gotten touches on the post to humor Steams line. How about Lure? That's his guard mindset. Spin at 6'10 and dump down a pass. Uh -huh. And it deflected, and Purdue turns it over. It's five for them here in the first half. Wisconsin last year school record 30 wins. They reached number one in the polls for the first time in school history. Right now number 11. Rabenhoff nearly lost the dribble, working on more. Goes the other way, can't find the range, goes in, and it's bottled up here. There will be a foul as well, and it'll go against Wisconsin. For Bobby Huggins, the question is Joe Alexander, who played a little bit against Marshall. Will he be himself? Will he be 100% healthy for Monday night's matchup? They'd like it. I don't know that he can be. Grabbing off with the foul to send Juwan Johnson to the line. He's only at 60%. We saw Andy North coming up in the elevator today over at the hotel, Wisconsin alum. And Golf analyst as well, all decked out in his Badger gear. He is a serious fan. He and his wife live in Madison, and he was a terrific high school basketball player. Actually had scholarship offers. Now, he probably made a pretty good choice. I think he did. He did just fine with the sticks. Two open championships. I said, Andy, a little nervous. He said, boy, these guys are gritty. They're tough. I know there's going to be a lot of floor birds today out there. He was excited about it. Lower looking inside, now takes to the dribble. Great bounce pass, and you talked about his guard abilities despite his size at 6'10". That's twice we've seen him make moves off the dribble and deliver passes in the perfect position. That's why he played guard in high school. He's got that in his repertoire. That's a tough matchup. Played guard until he grew nine inches. 
hands off for Hummel. Hummel wants to shoot it. Came off the hand looking good. Johnson up for the rebound, batted away. Hughes tried to save it and could not. He's on the line. Back over to the Boilermakers and back to that look by Laura. Well, uh, just a solid distribution. Goes right off the bounce. Hummel overcommits on the challenge. He stands up as a defender, and that allows Laura to go around. Kravenhoff, great read on the backside. Kravenhoff with those terrific hands. Not going to miss a pass like that. And Boilermakers with the ball here. Dead even at 23. The long run from the corner, and it's Keith Grant. If he gets hot, watch out. Three out of 11. Wisconsin has not hit one from outside that arc. Purdue by three. Lord dumps it down for Butch this time. Before the shot, a foul. Which wanted that to go in the worst way. Yet another. This could have been his third assist, folks. How about that? The jump stop delivery. Hey, Butch, I, I thought it was going to be an end one. Moore fouled it. And Moore has to leave as Kramer comes back on the floor for Matt Painter. Which is 70 percent from the line, short on the first one. Tipped and it's Kranenhoff denied the first time, and they're going to call out a jump in the possession arrow. We'll take it the other way. The length and athleticism of Jawan Johnson has been on full display for the first 20 minutes of this basketball game. The new basketball, where the maker defense at times has been suffocating. Exactly one minute to go. In the first half, and it is that exactly what we expected. It's been two teams punching each other right in the mouth <laughs> for the first 20 minutes. Grant, trying to fire up another. Yes! with a big, big lift for the Boilermakers down the stretch of the first half. They're up six, and they turn it over again. Here's Kramer on the open floor. Dylan Hughes got his hand on that pass. It'll stay right here with 26.2 seconds. How about that? Matt Painter got four points a game from Keaton Grant last year, and the kid couldn't stick the ball in the ocean. It'd be hard to do from this particular geographic location anyway. <laughs> yeah. But the guy, what an improvement. An official timeout before the inbounds pass. Just under half a minute to play here in the first half. And it looks as if Purdue will at least have the lead at the break against number 11 Wisconsin. The Badgers unbeaten in the Big Ten. Six now for Grant. Well, an ideal world here. You take one shot. And only the chance for a tip. And you do not want to allow Wisconsin an opportunity to change ends. Well, Keaton Grant, the man of the ball here, might be the best choice. And this old roof may be blown clear off if he nails another one from about 22. Eight seconds left. And that's going to be an offensive foul on Johnson. What? Mm. Was it on the screen or Johnson? I'm actually going to call this one on Keaton Grant yeah. off the ball. I, I thought it might be on the screen because there was absolutely no foul from Johnson. Hughes with one second left launches the three and that's going to count right at the buzzer. So Trayvon Hughes and a North a little happier now. The first three Wisconsin hit the entire half. We said these two coaches felt like it was somebody making shots under duress. You're not going to get much better defense or a challenge by Robbie Hummel. That is just a big time shot by an athletic Trayvon Hughes. He knocks it down at the buzzer. The only one they hit in the first half and it draws them to it in three. 
29 26 at half Purdue with the lead as we go to Scott be back to Purdue and college basketball presented by all tell wireless on a Saturday afternoon inside the Big Ten a good one brewing here Purdue with the lead at the half 29 to 26 over number 11 and unbeaten in the conference Wisconsin Doris Burke again with two big calls there one a call and the other a great shot selection by Hughes at the end of the first half could make all the difference today well in all likelihood this thing looks like it's coming down to the wire and the key play here just watch Keaton Grant he's going to try to set a back screen and in doing so he commits an offensive foul the crowd reacted negatively but I thought it was a good call that allowed this sequence Trayvon Hughes hits a huge shot so instead of building on a six-point lead they get some momentum Wisconsin does on that shot going into the locker room so at halftime 29 26 the Boilermakers trying to spring the upset of sorts here on their home court and we'll see how those two big plays at the end of the first half affect the outcome of this one Wisconsin in possession opening up the second half Landry on a drive airborne that won't fall for him tipped up and in by Butch however relentless he was working weak side glass and Chalishan lost contact with him and that allowed Butch to get in there Brian Butch with eight and so it becomes a one point game in the first half minute of the second half or will back this out and lose his dribble here's Grant on high and right by Flowers and that Flowers reached around and plucked it away from him and a terrific defensive play Here's Landry again. Grant came over to help out off that backboard and that won't fall in. Terrific job by Purdue to change ends off the turnover. Just great hustle to prohibit a layup. I see why Flowers is such a noted defender. And you always have to look for him. Even when you get by a Kramer with the misfire. And we'll go the other way. And quickly, Matt Painter into the ear of Tom O'Neill. So give you a look at the ESPN stat sheet. Hughes with that huge bucket right at the end of the first half with nine points he's won more with seven and he's chipped down with three assists i think one thing to watch for on the offensive end for wisconsin they were six for 12 inside the paint when they did a good job getting it inside how often can they get those looks there's mark Woods going three white jerseys gets it off and that's going to fall down out of the corner by flowers who is hitting 53 percent from three in the big ten do you see why bo ryan talks so much about post touches when you enter the ball whether you get a shot or not the defense has to react that allows perimeter options to open up first lead in a long time for the badgers calishan up top for grant here's kramer wisconsin in front Grant with a fall away. Landry with the rebound and the whistle underneath with 18 12 to play. And now the Purdue fans like the light of that call against the Boilermakers. I think that's on Hummel, and he was throwing bodies around in there. That's his second. You take that. It's only number two. You want to be physical. He wants to let those red jerseys know he is there to compete inside. Outside the three point line. Here's Flowers now with 15 to get the shot off. And now Hughes will back it away. We've got 10 seconds on the shot clock. Here's Hughes again. Not this time. Did not duplicate his effort at the end of the first half, and the foul will go against Wisconsin. Bradenhoff with the first one, his second. One of the key components of this continuity offense, the swing offense, is a post-touch, because once the ball goes inside, there's reaction. Look at that reaction by the white jerseys. A nice dump out, an uncontested jump shot, good offense. There's Grant at the foul line. Hummel trying to swing it underneath for Kramer. Chalashan will get it back now. Trying to get inside with hips hook shot. His first bucket today. That's his strong hand. So anytime he's going over that right shoulder, he's in his comfort zone. That's the size answer in the Manya Chalashan for the Boilermakers. They have tied it at 31. 
Flowers, quick move to his right, then draws the double team. Here's Brooks outside the arc, and he'll knock that one down. And the big fella, who is only three out of 32 from three-point territory, 0-9-4, that shooting percentage. <laughs> I'm getting closer, I'm not shooting air balls. That one touched nothing but the net. And a sweet Kramer left over. Yes! That'll be a two-pointer for Chris Kramer. Two disciplined offenses, two quality looks right there. Wisconsin with the ball up by one. Landry trying for Butch. Boy, Butch and Chalishan laying all over each other. They are hip to hip. Flowers locks it up. It's free into the corner. Butch hitting the deck, trying to save it, and went down hard into a railing area over here. And Butch has had injury trouble throughout his career. Able to get back up. I thought it was a tough shot. There's still 15 on the shot clock, but look at this all out hustle. He lands a little bit awkwardly on that right leg. Of course, it was his right elbow that he dislocated against Ohio State last February. It's a big reason why they lost in the second round of the NCAA tournament to UNLV. And he's still grimacing, still in pain. And the 6'11 senior has to come off. Yeah, for a guy who's taken some hits in his career, he was hugely valuable. He was playing terrific basketball, could make shots, was rebounding, lost 20 pounds this year, is moving better laterally, good quickness on the defenseman, or better quickness, I should say. It's all relative. You're trying to grab that lead back. More in place. Tell you, this is a four-year freshman class with some talent in it. The kind of guys you can build a program around. Into the second half, Purdue back in the lead by one. Flowers finds Landry. Kravenhoff well outside. The big along with Seamsman hits Flowers with the fall away. And the whistle and that shot went off the iron, and the foul will go against the Wisconsin Badgers. 35-34, Purdue looking for the upset win today at home. Now, but Purdue, similar story. Five players averaging just under eight points per game. It makes it hard to put in a game plan on the defensive end. You gotta play everybody straight up, Dick. Now, Brian Butch remains out after the nasty spill into the corner. We'll see when he returns. But right now, a little bit shaken up. Inside three is Johnson, and he makes the pay as he swooped right in for the stuff. Well, what do you think happened there? Matt Painter said, okay, I'm going to watch the scoreboard and see if anyone checks in. Is Brian Butch in or out? If he's out, I'm going right to Jawan Johnson and let him athletically challenge Greg Steensman. 6 0 run for the Boilermakers as they open up a three point lead. Kravenhoff harassed by each one more right in front of him. It's Landry with a good catch, put it to the deck, a tough shot on the iron and fell off. And now the two on two, it's Moore trying to take advantage. Nearly tossed it away as Punch saved it in the corner. He missed an opportunity. He had three red jerseys slow up the floor. Martin doubled up. A oh, great save on that play by Steve Smith with a tough D. It is not for the faint of heart in the paint. Flowers trying to roll that one to Kravenhoff, and the foul will go against Moore of the Boilermakers. And tonight, ESPN dish. The guys who bring the speed for Connecticut. Craig Austray had to have a terrific game for Connecticut, a guy who they have been trying to make play faster. Etwan Moore just picked up his third. The first man in any difficulty here. Martin trying to hang on there, and he commits another foul for Purdue. That'll be three on him. Yeah, I said to watch at the start of the say how many times Wisconsin was able to get close touches. But clearly, their staff is trying to make that happen because they were six for 12 in the paint in the first half. That is great percentage. There's still a ton of time. A great inbounds play and laying it up and in is Joe Kravenhoff, the 6'7 junior, off the feet from Hughes. Just a terrific timing play. You put everybody up above the free throw line and you get them isolated low on the inbounds. Wisconsin pulling to within one. Grant off balance and he'll draw the contact and be shooting here with 13 40 runs. 
Every single shot contested, but that inbounds plays beautifully well. Well, what happened was the defender is top side, and that's just going to allow a straight cut to the rim by Kravenhoff. You've got bodies near each other, but watch that. Just a solid cut. Defenders on the wrong side keep rim for The good news is for Wisconsin that Brian Butch is back in the game. He just picked up that foul moments ago. But well enough to return, and he's all grin, so the good signs for Bo Ryan and the Badgers as Grant is at the line. So far with eight points. Going up against Trump, two very, very quick guards to the toe. A three point lead for the Boilermakers. Travelhouse swooping into the left hand. Boy, that was a strong move. This is a guy who has always made very good decisions. Excellently, more offensive mind, but understanding that there were shots with the, with the graduation of Tucker and Taylor. Shot distribution was an interesting thing for Wisconsin this year. And flips it up with the right hand. That won't fall. Grant high up for the rebound. He turned that one away from Kravenhoff. Here's Trump open. That glances away. Hummel with the rebound. And also a foul against him. That'll be his third. And the paint crew is not pleased. I'm not sure we've heard a whistle that they've been pleased with. A one-point lead for Purdue. Defensive stop there by Johnson to deny, and Hughes ties up and fouls Hummel. Yeah, this is almost like the clear path to the basket rule in the NBA. This is an intentional at the half court line. I think the fear being that there was a layup to be had by Wisconsin. There was no attempt to make a play on the ball. Long arms of Jawan Johnson, and watch this. And this is, yeah, I mean, that's just an obvious call. Semi tackle there by Hughes, an intentional foul, so it'll be Hummel at the line, a standing free throw shooter. And they have the ball as well, 12 41 to go in this contest. Foul trouble starting to become an issue for Mount Payne. And around and out with that one, they had been 6 for 6. So the paint crew is right on top of these calls, though. <laughs> There's the intentional. Uh, Trayvon Hughes. Three o'clock yesterday afternoon. We arrived at seven for Wisconsin's practice, and they were out there in fours, ready to go. Yeah, and had been out for several hours to that point. And we were locked out for two or three minutes, and we were freezing in that <laughs> short period of time. They were not. It's great to be young and have a tent. Here's Johnson straight on. An excellent look at the basket. Trayvon how high for the rebound. Back down on John Johnson. That pass off the fingertips of Bohanna with the save. Oh, a catch. Nine on the shot clock. Down low and on the line. Lowe is going to turn things over. Back over to Purdue. That's 11 turnovers for the Badgers. The trademark of this program has been low turnover numbers. They're not as solid, but still on the positive side. Is not a bad number. They do up by two, and Butch is going to pick up that foul as he tried to slow down Crump. Baker was outside for a long time since 3 o'clock yesterday, bringing the tents and getting ready for a big, big clash against Wisconsin. Exactly what we expected a very, very tight game for do up by two. Inside Mackey Arena, Dave O'Brien, Doris Burke with you. Do you think down the stretch you're going to see Wisconsin go into the paint a lot more, take advantage of their size? I think they should. They were 6 for 12 in there in the first half. They're 3 for 6. That's 50%. Now, they don't look to post their big guys necessarily, but in the natural course of their offense, all of those guys, bigs and smalls, will get opportunities in the paint. It's translated well to a high percentage for Bo Ryan's book. Kramer on the dribble, and will shove there, and another one there by Butch, and he can't believe it. 
That's three on him, and he's racked those up in a hurry since coming back on. Well, the other thing, now, they've got 16 fouls, so the next time Wisconsin commits, Purdue will start shooting some free throws. We showed you the first half. It is unusual for Wisconsin to put their opponent on the line. Well, another seat for Brian Butch. 13 points, eight rebounds. Three fouls in two minutes for Butch. Purdue leading it 40 to 38. Here's Kramer again. Set a good screen. Kramer doesn't shoot very often. They'd like him to get a little more involved in the offense. That one squirted right over the baseline, and Purdue will have it with 11 19 to go on a fresh shot clock. Something to watch for with Purdue. They've lost three games by four points or less. Game management down the stretch. When you've got three of your top four scores in the first year of college basketball, how do they manage the game? Johnson to catch off the inbounds. Purdue's gone nearly four minutes without a field goal here. This is the spot they break in, and another whistle and a foul off the ball. That'll be a foul against Purdue. Yeah, I think it's on Crump, but another illegal screen. We saw a big one to end the half. We get green for that. That'll be his third. Remember last week, Illinois, the Keaton Grant shot, which really was a poor shot. Now he ends up making it. It's a classic reaction by Matt Painter. But just game management down the stretch has produced solid in their decision making. Flowers on the dribble. Trump hounding him. Kramer nearly with the theft. That left Landry open. And now Kramer on the baseline, and he gets the foul. And howls come from Mackey Arena. They thought he had it clean. One of the top keeps inside the Big Ten. Well, I, I don't think either side, you know, is pleased with these because Bob Ryan had Brian Butch picked up a couple of ticky tacks, and now Matt Painter the same. One and one time here for Wood. Scuffles at the line, just 12 out of 22 for the year. The freshman out of Long Lake, Minnesota. Smooth on the first one. Matt Painter looking for a signature victory inside the Big Ten. Uh, Wisconsin has one. They've got that signature road win at Texas. Laura making one out of two. You're in a good place as a team, I think, mentally and physically for Purdue. You're proving every day that this is a huge game in terms of how you do yourself as a basketball team. John Johnson losing his dribble, hands off for Kramer. Purdue usually in no hurry, unless Grant has the shot open from three-point line, and he's going right away. Very patient offensively. Shot clock down to seven. Green, too strong with that one. The rebound tips, and Wisconsin will control it as Bohanna will bring it up. Pounded by Crump. They call that jamming the ball handler. Now another one out front. These are plays 45, 50 feet from the basket that you don't need. Crump with the foul right there at midcourt. And Matt Painter will tell you, this, they like to do that. They want to jam the ball handler, okay? They want discipline pressure. That's not discipline pressure when you foul that far from the rim. Trump will step out. Chalashan back on. Green will also come off the floor for Purdue. And it's Jason Bohannon at the line at 79 percent. Good shooter, good passer. Passing ability seems to run in the family. Jason was a standout quarterback prospect at Iowa in high school. His dad for the university at Iowa, his dad Gordy, led the Hawkeyes to the 1981 Rose Bowl as an excellent quarterback. Mm. Big 10 through and through. Just over 10 minutes to play in this contest. And one point separates Purdue and Wisconsin. The Badgers with the lead. Boilermakers have missed their last five shots. Grant, here it comes. Not this time from three-point distance. Off Wisconsin, 9.49 left in the game. Wisconsin are going to be disciplined. They're going to guard the three-point line. They're going to be in help defense when they need to be. And they're going to challenge shots. They're trying to get it in. Still trying. And cannot avoid that violation. 
five second violation as Wisconsin locks down defensively. Yeah, well, that's the signature of Bo Ryan. He said 1972, a coaching clinic with Bobby Knight. And then his coach in high school and college were the two guys who shaped his philosophies defensively. And Bo, one of the very best in the business at teaching tough, hard nosed defense. Lord gives that one up. Here's Hughes to fire. That's off the back iron. And an over the top foul there by John Lord. So the freshman picks up his second. And puts Purdue at the free throw line. So one and one time here. Play a lot of fouls since halftime on both sides. So it'll be humble to the strike. And he shoots about 86%. Double the freshman out of Alparaiso, Indiana. And that one will roll in. Good shooting touch for him. Also 44% from three. Look at the Bo Ryan career resume. The UW Platte believe was outstanding, winning all those national titles. One, in fact, at one point went 30 and 0. So he knows a thing or two about what John Calipari is going through right now. An undefeated season, being the favorite. An active winning percentage, second only to Roy Williams. Guy's been successful at any level. There's no question he could flat out coach. Kravenhoff looking for Landry, but Landry couldn't get free of Chalishan and another hold. It so really has become a whistleblowing yeah. parade here in the second half. Yep. It's going to be four on Hummel. So he has to come off, and Scott Martin will replace him. <laughs> you know how the kids feel. <laughs> so Lord will be at the line again. And that one barely glancing off the iron. He needs a set of glasses with that eye chart. That would complete the visual. They're looking to add on to their one point lead under nine minutes to go in this contest. Moore will fire it up. Yes, a three pointer. That'll line and everybody up inside the building. A four point lead for the Boilermakers. Brown howling for a walk there on Landry. He's going to challenge Chalishan. Now back outside they go. Brown up on the drive. Kramer denies him the kick out. Here's Lore. That one misses badly. Kramer to push the tempo here. Flips it up. Off the window for two. And Wisconsin needs a timeout. Timeout Badgers. They have fallen behind suddenly by six. Uh, without Butch in the game, they are unable to get post touches. Kramer goes end to end, recognizing no big body. I'm going right to the rack. And the former high school quarterback says, yes, sir. Up six. And for today's Tarak game track, we are discussing Etuan Moore and his effect on this game. Already a dozen points, passing the ball well. But look at the difference of the benches today. A little surprising, because Wisconsin Struggling on the offensive end, six minutes without a field goal. Go back to the first half. They had a five and a half minute stretch. We talked about Purdue and their want to put a lot of pressure on the perimeter. Very, very unusual for a Bo Ryan team to come up short in the bench numbers by the end of 40 minutes. Usually a real strength for Wisconsin. It'll be Brian Butch to the line at 70%. Remember that thrilling win at Texas with Michael Flowers sealed with the big three and that terrific steal at the end. Butch was actually the star of the game, not Flowers. Butch wound up with 21 points and 11 rebounds. Yeah, that's what I was saying. You're getting some touches when you get it on the offensive end. He answered the bell in a big situation. He's your experienced guy. He's skilled. Allow him an opportunity. It's one of two. Foul shooting a bit of an issue for Wisconsin at times. Here's more now. Grant down the drive, back out 
to the youngster. Here's Kramer. I guess we're talking about Purdue. Just about everybody's a youngster. Chalashan. Yes! A three-pointer. The big foul from Bosnia. Fired up. That's his strength. He's a big man like most Europeans who can step away and make shots. And an eight-point lead for the Boilermakers. They have the Badgers back on their heels all of a sudden. Landry in close. Rebounded by Brooks. Right back up with the foul. Also took a shot. It's been a tough day for him physically. Big Monday means a full night of basketball on ESPN. First at 7, Eastern Legal taking on UConn in the Big East battle. Then at 9, it's Oklahoma State against Oklahoma on Big Monday. Martin just picked up his fourth foul. Earl Clark and Terrence Williams start to play some ball for Rick Pitino. Williams coming off an 11.9 rebound, 7 assists, 3 steal game. That is filling the box score. Butch took a shot in the eye. He's got to put that contact lens back in. And having some difficulty with that. Trying to make a, a sprawling save into the corner and wound up right into the brick here at Old Mackey Arena. And had to leave the floor for several minutes after that. A look at his day. That's a guy who struggled with the shooting. There was a point early in the game where he hits a three, but this is where he's been effective. A little duck in on the weak side, the pass is delivered for Moore, and then the offensive rebound just beats Chalashan, keeps it alive with a tip. Good hands there. He's really 20 pounds lighter, says he feels better moving. That's the three I was alluding to. As you said, he had been struggling from out there. He made a joke with some of the local media in Madison. They said, you know, what do you think about your shooting? He said, hey, I'm putting it on the rim now, no air ball. They have been just three out of 32 from three-point land before nailing that one. And the paint crew having some fun with the big guy as he finally gets that contact lens put back in. And Brian Butch will be at the line. 70% shooter will be shooting two. He makes 10 of these a game or a, a, a day after practice. Wanted to improve his percentage. Of course, I jinxed him. It was a bugaboo for Wisconsin prior to the conference season. They've shot it better in conference. This guy put in the extra time. Can he get one down here? It's two out of five from the line for Bo Ryan today. A seven-point lead for the Boilermakers. Looking like a confident team here. Under six and a half minutes to go in the game. Green on the floor because of the foul trouble. Boy, Green is inside for two. See what I mean about him? The pace. He, he does things quickly without rushing each one more. And that athleticism is ability to rise over defenders. 14 points for him. A 12-2 run for the Boilermakers. Once again, it's Butch feeling good about those threes, and he buries this one. That one quiets the crowd a little bit. Two of those today. Doesn't it feel as though every time he's touched it today, good things have happened for the most part? He likes that spot. Yes, he does. And Purdue knew that. That's an area that they talked about on the floor. Boy, an inside challenge and very tough. Too strong with that shot. And Purdue is going to retain possession. But back to Butch with another three. Well, you get one down. It's amazing how much easier that second one comes off your fingers. You don't you won't wonder why he struggles, because that form is terrific. Maybe he was nailing that second free throw that got him going again, but that's a 10% shooter from three-point distance. We're trying to check it in. It does to more. Coming up on five and a half minutes left to this one. More dead on. Not this time. Too strong. Green with a solid rebound. Stripped and fouled on the play. 5.32 to go. So game management. A touched on this about the nine-minute mark. Matt Painter's got tons of freshmen and sophomore. Three of his top four scores in their first year. How do they manage the game coming down the stretch? All the close losses they have. There's a reason for that. Four games they have lost by three points. Purdue, Clemson, Wofford, Iowa State, and Michigan State. All close ones. They've been good at the line. 
Eight out of ten after that miss. 52 to 46. And Chalishin really coming out to challenge Bush. Grabbing up on the drive with the spin. He wins it back with 13 seconds on the shot clock. Bush looking for a guard. Six on the shot clock. Down to four. Bush has to hurry it up there in the foul. Bush got hit. He'll be shooting again with five minutes to go. Yet another time when Brian Butch touches the ball. He's trying to get the basketball to the wing. Great tonight by Etwan Moore. That forces him to use the dribble. And a lot of contact. Butch is fired up. Jalashan with the foul. Butch makes the first. And now Robbie Hummel will come back on along with Jerron Johnson for the Boilermakers. Larry Bird used to say that there's no cheating at the free throw line. It really comes down to whether or not you've paid the price in practice to get your form down. Have you practiced? It's muscle memory. Look at that. Ten, ten straight made free throws after practice every single day or Butch doesn't leave the gym. They made the pair. They pulled it within four. Which with 12 points in the second half is 18 in the game. There's jump pass right into the hands of the sea of red. Game management. Trying to force a play instead of working your offense. Landry looking for a cutter. Puts it to the deck on Hummel. And rolls around and off. Hughes in there amongst the trees. Right back up and in. But Trayvon Hughes, the sophomore out of Greens. Grizzled, experienced players, Landry and Butch, making every play for Wisconsin. On the left open, his three. Oh, the money! Robbie Hall absolutely drained a key shot. They're back on top by five. Under four minutes left. Butch harassed, leans in, left it short. Landry back up and it's blocked away by Johnson. Big stop for the Boilermakers. Matt Painter's running up and down the sideline trying to tell his guys what play he wants run. It's hard for them to hear. That one kicked by Flowers. So no steal, 340 to go, and a timeout on the court. Well, Robbie Hummel was in our star watch, six foot eight, fearless, composed, the most consistent performer for Matt Painter in a big moment, a big shot. Dave. Scott, thank you very much. Purdue on top here, 55 to 50, and fans of all ages supporting the Boilermakers, loving it inside Mackey Arena to this point. Hummel will walk it across, no violation there. Bo Ryan is up off of the, his bench. He felt like that was a violation. Johnson can't get the rebound. Butch cradles it. Who comes out of there with it? The senior, the fifth-year senior has made a lot of big plays. And, uh, big Ten standings, what is on the line. Indiana, Wisconsin in conference play, undefeated. Indiana's already gone down today outside the conference to Connecticut. Here's Bush. That'll rattle out. But he's inside the cylinder and spit right back out. Wow. A lot of people around the Big Ten were anxious to see this stretch for Wisconsin. Indiana after today, at Minnesota after that, Iowa at home. Official timeout. And Tom O'Neill and Ted Hillary are going to get over to the monitors here with 333 remaining. In the second half, 55 to 50, Purdue clinging to the lead, looking for their biggest victory of the season and an upset of number 11 Wisconsin. Clock is not working. You see, the shot clock was ticking off, but the game clock is not ticking off. Clock it stops. Trying to get a look at that and reset it. Another five seconds. Be the guess here. Maybe they reset it to 328. But let's take a look at the clock. Put a possible violation there. Bo Ryan is up off the bench. Well, you sound wonderful, Doris. <laughs> As always, there's a bridge with the rebound. And still stuck at 333. For the 
takes five. A lot of time and off the clock there. So that's exactly what they're trying to do is figure out how much as the game clock just froze up there. Well, depending on how long this takes, you know, if there's an advantage, disadvantage to this and the anxiety level going up, you got a little bit more experience on it. Here today in West Lafayette, Indiana, who has been a very good home team under that young man, Matt Painter. They won their last nine home games against Wisconsin. At all time, they have really dominated the series of games played here in West Lafayette. Trying to do it again today. They got the clock squared away, coming up on three minutes remaining. More outside for the Boilermakers. Kramer. Here's more again to penetrate. Bearborn, and that'll roll in. Good solid screen. And there's a mature feel about each one more. And again, I'll keep saying it, the pace. He doesn't allow people to speed him up. He's six over his average today. He has 16 points. The Badgers need an answer. Moore holding him up, however, reaching in on Bohanna. 228 left. That'll be his fourth foul. College basketball presented by Altel Wireless and number 11 Wisconsin is in deep trouble against Purdue here in the Big Ten. Dave O'Brien, Doris Brook, great to have you along. Sold out at the arena. And it was it was deafening in the in a very few seconds after they opened the gates here. All the students rushed in and the paint crew supporting Matt Painter, the head coach of the Boilermakers. They have been terrific. Feels like Indiana's been to the free throw line a ton here in the second half, or at least relative to Purdue's trips to the free throw line. 57-52. Moore lobs for Johnson. He lost the handle on it up around the iron. Again, game management. It was a pretty good pass, but it's got to be perfect in this situation. Hughes stops, pops. Tipped up, and that will go. Butch again is the man on the spot, and it's a three-point lead for the Boilermakers. Under two minutes. You're thinking quality shots on every single trip of your Purdue. You're thinking stops if you're Bo Ryan. We're going to find out just how much this young Purdue team has grown up today. Kramer with a hard drive, a wild-looking shot. The rebound comes free. Timeout. Wisconsin takes a timeout with a minute 36 to go. And Matt Painter clinging to a three-point lead. That looked to me like there was enough contact for there to be a foul in, in one way or another. Now, we get the benefit of this, a second look. That, to me, has got to be a foul. I don't care if you're going to call it a block of charge, but call something. That's too much contact yeah. for there not to be something. I agree with you. I would have thought a charge. Yes. I was hanging in there. Yeah. Well, tonight, ESPN dishes up Big East College basketball. Roy Hibbert of Georgetown against West Virginia. College hoops on ESPN tonight at 7 Eastern. You know, and I just, we just came off the Providence Seton Hall game and walking out of that game with the officials something they told me was regardless of where contact happens around the basket that is something they want to call so that's one they miss what you said a big one today with 20 points also chipped in with 14 rebounds each one more leading the way 16 for the Boilermakers who are smelling an upset but they're trying to hang on now Let's see, does Wisconsin go through Butch? And again, I know it's continuity, but every time he's touched it, something good has happened. Grab it hard. Bohannon locks it up. That's in and out. Butch fighting again for the rebound. Kept it alive for Kravenhoff. Now he lost the handle. A collision as Kramer went down, and Hughes commits the foul with 116 left. I'll tell you what, I like how hard these two teams pursue the basketball. Butch is going to keep this alive and give his team a chance at a possession. It just is a solid strip. And there's a foul contact by Hughes. But are these guys playing hard, giving up their bodies, pursuing the basketball all over the floor? This is college basketball at its best right here. 
Well, certainly not fluid. The shooting percentages have not been anything to write home about. The offense event hasn't been spectacular, but it has been a, a whole lot of fun. A gritty style. Kramer at the line, and this is a bit of an issue for him. Only 57 percent. Sweet on the first one. Wow. It's been about heart and toughness today. Sweet center coming your way next. Donovan will step off here for Wisconsin. And Purdue's lead at four. Kramer, the team captain, just a sophomore himself out of Huntington, Indiana. In and out with the second one. Wisconsin needs a go to man. Flowers has been that guy in a big way already this season. He is on the court. Under a minute. Landry with it. The crowd wants a big defensive stop. Hughes lost his river. Bohan on the baseline. Gave it up to Landry for the easy deuce. 48 seconds left. How about that for poise by Wisconsin? You've got time to rely on your defense to make a stop. Two-point lead and a timeout for the Boilermakers. On top, 58 to 56. Oh boy, they were under the rest of the shot clock. This looks like it's a possession going nowhere, but how about Bohannon get right by multiple defenders? You force the rotation. You think you're going to get beat, so everybody's scrambling, and that leaves a wide open Landry. Nice job to not pin it underneath the rest of that shot clock. Now, clearly, and I've said it all in the second half, the game management for Purdue, you want a very good shot opportunity here. But you want to use as much of this 27 seconds remaining as you possibly can, unless you get an uncontested wide open look. The reset. See the foul situation there. Possession arrow in Purdue's favor. It has been an emotional day here in West Lafayette, Indiana. The bell rung. It was like a heavyweight fight of sorts. And both head coaches, heavyweights in their own right, you'd say, they go toe-to-toe -to -toe on this day. Kramer and company have the upper hand, leading it 58-56. to 56. Purdue with the ball here. Now, the two guys who I think have had a very good feel each one more has been able to get to the rack. He's, he he uh, uses his hesitation very well. Keaton Grant is a guy who's assertive and he's not afraid of these moments. Shot selection, though, is important for him. Purdue's biggest lead was nine. Wisconsin's biggest lead was seven. Now the Boilermakers have the 58-56 advantage with 40 seconds remaining. Now they've got the timeout. Should they need them? Should they? Play breakdown. They've got the chance to use one of three timeouts here. Fifteen on the shot clock. Twenty-five seconds left in the game. Seven to shoot. Here's more on the drive. Fires it up. It's around. It's around. It rolls off. Fifteen seconds left. Hughes in the backcourt. Wisconsin down by two. And a timeout on the floor with 10.8 seconds to go. Well, exactly the guy who I thought they'd go through, each one more, is the guy they chose. They were coming to him no matter what. It looked like there was a solid deny on the first pass, but he's able on the screen and roll to get around. And that thing is all but down. And not surprisingly, Brian Bush comes up with the board, and they're going to use, I believe, Wisconsin's last time out. That was yeah. their last time out. Bo Ryan's daughters are here as well. Yeah. Again, because of their system now, you, you look for a high ball screen. And remember, on the pick and pop, in a high ball screen setting, the guy who's hit two threes here today who had struggled with his shot is Brian Butch. So on that screen and roll, Purdue's been hedging real big. You can't lose sight of Brian Butch if you're Purdue. 6-11, how do you lose sight of him ever? 10.8 <laughs> seconds remaining. Wisconsin with the ball down, two on the road. 
Will it be Flowers again to the rescue? He has the ball here, working on Kramer. Seven seconds left off the book screen. Flowers on the drive, leads in, and it's denied by Hubbard. A great defensive stop. A tremendous defensive play. One second left. And it was Hummel, the freshman, who came up huge. And Purdue on the verge of an upset of number 11, Wisconsin. Uh, how about this play? It looks like he is in jail, but his length is what helps him. That's six foot eight, checking a guy much taller, I mean much shorter and much faster. Looks like he's beat, but he can't quite get the shoulder turned. And it's his length and the react from the bench. You don't think they know this is big time? And a terrific non-call. No foul there at all as Hummel made the stop. And the key there, what he did is, despite the fact that it looked like he was beat, he had enough space between him and the offensive player that they couldn't call the body foul. That is as smart a basketball play as you'll get. And I think the official's looking at the clock here. Checking just how much remains here on the whistle. Well, remember now, it is when the official acknowledges, you know, that he's going to stop the clock with the whistle. So when the, when the foul is called, oh, I thought there was going to be 1.2, okay. I thought it might have been about two seconds. Just looking at the video. So we set to 1.2. Very, very good at the line. He has made three out of four so far today. A three point lead for Purdue. Hummel with a great defensive play, now looking for the put away foul shot. 60 to 56. Flowers trying to get it in. And that will do it. Purdue with the upset today. They knock off number 11 Wisconsin and hand the Badgers their first Big Ten loss of the year. The paint crew storming the court here. And Purdue wins a dandy 60 to 56. They had lost so many close ones, but this is a Purdue team that's young, it's talented, and with more repetitions, they are becoming the grizzled kind of team that you want to become. This can change your perception and believe you can play with anybody in the country if you're Purdue. Well, that's the kind of game it was. It's a nice moment between Kramer and Butch. Very emotional, very, very physical.